designing social learning systems, um, and I appreciate this is not necessarily an, uh, a subject that you may come across in drought every day, but we'll go with it. This is a uh, project that I'm working on and driver with uh, Jamie Hannaford down at CEH, and I'll explain more briefly. Um, I'm going to talk very briefly about driver, the social learning processes and some early findings. I mean, we're still sort of very much in the sort of um, beginning of this project. And in so doing, I'd like to just acknowledge the people who were in part of the work that we've been doing so far um, in terms of the participants, but also Sophie Hain and Liz Stevens, um, who've also contributed some of our thinking around this. An invitation from me. Um, would you like to draw me drought? I'm going to give you a minute to draw me drought. Draw me an icon, a picture, an image, anything you like that conveys your idea pictorially as an image of drought. Okay, I'm going to give you, I'm give you a minute of my precious time. <laughs> what a gift. <laughs> and if you haven't started, you've got 55 seconds left. So an image that captures your idea of drought. I should have the countdown music at this point. Um, oh, you've got 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so no pressure. Come up with some of that. Okay, five, <laughs> five seconds. Do you want to just hold up what you've done? Just, I mean, just sort of randomly to other people. I mean, not necessarily just to me, because I can't see it as easily. Show it to the person next to you. That was quite exciting, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> what, what did you notice? Did you notice that people had drawn something quite different to yourself? Did every, I mean, just the people around you, I know this isn't an easy room to do this in, but were there differences? Well, did you see something completely different to what you'd drawn? Yes. No, you didn't? You've been watching? They've, they've been cheating, they've been cheating. Okay. I mean, essentially what you've just done is a, a very, very, very quick social learning process. You've done something, and then you've engaged with another person, and it's, you know, however brief. Essentially, that's a, the beginnings of a learning process, whereby you're revealing your idea about your framing of what drought is, and you begin to engage with another person about their framing of drought. And you're beginning to learn, potentially, if you extend that process on, about what it is. And, of course, you do something, so I have to show you mine. This is mine. Um, and you notice there's not a word rainfall in there. There's not a word of soil indexes or anything like that. Um, because essentially I see drought as an emergent phenomenon. I don't see drought as, as an input into a system. I see it as an emergent property of a system, which is something like that. Um, so this, <laughs> this, this to me is, is my kind of drawing, and I appreciate... <laughs> The word drawing is, is somewhat limited in this sense, but essentially that's my kind of conceptual model of what drought is. Okay? Now, you, I'm not expecting you to agree with it, but the point is by showing you it pictorially, you can begin to engage with where your differences exist and we can begin to learn from each other about why you think it might be different and why I think it might be different to you. Um, and we can have a conversation around that and move on from there. So essentially that's what I, we've been doing in the driver project. And this, see, this sort of the energy just goes down there. Did you notice that? Um, the driver project really is about improving the link between hydrometeorological drought characterization and environmental and social economic impacts. So effectively, what we're trying to do is to see how we can improve the design of indicators to incorporate the element of impact that drought has into those indicators. And we've got some partners here from uh, USA, UK, and Adelaide, and Australia, funded by the Belmont Forum. 
And essentially in the UK, what we've been trying to do is some knowledge gathering workshops. And we're collaborating with several of the UK um, projects and funded by the Research Council. And knowledge gathering, my goodness, what a fantastic phrase that was. We put that into the bid and then we thought, actually, that's an awful phrase because it involves this kind of thing. Um, you know, you just hoover up everybody's ideas and you stick it in a bag and away you go. Now, that's not what we, we decided we were about. So we ditched that very quickly and we came up with something much more about learning. Um, and we've tried to do this as a learning approach where we're engaging with stakeholders' experiences and relations in their needs and understandings in relation to drought and trying to identify future needs for monitoring and early warning systems. That's our key. How can we improve monitoring and early warning systems and improve the nature of indicators such that those indicators represent some of the impacts related to drought? And um, trying to contribute to the whole debates around the research on drought happening in the UK. So our workshop design, this kind of workshop we've been doing with a range of stakeholders in the UK, is based around the social learning idea, which has been around for a few years now, arising from interaction between participants, and then a co-inquiry whereby people are contributing their um, experiences. And it's a mix of stuff that we do, um, and here is our kind of theoretical framing. And I hesitate to show any graph of two axes to an audience like this. Um, what we're trying to show here is that there's a relationship between changes in practices and changes in understanding, and that you begin to modify a situation, the governance system of drought in this case, through those changes. And here we're paying particular attention to within any one of those blobs to issues of stakeholding, facilitation, and epistemology, epistemological constraints. The um, framing you just did, the picture, represents your epistemology, your idea about what drought is. And so trying to reveal that is important for us. And here's a quick def definition of social learning, which I won't bore you with unduly, other than it's a socially constructing a, pro uh, a situation and understanding of the situation. So this is what we did. Um, we had a, a workshop where a whole range of people working at a table were developing their ideas with inputs from expert presenters and there was collaborate, uh, plenary sessions to enable them to develop their ideas, eventually coming out with something at the end. And this was the conversation we, had, we gave them. How do we know we're in drought? And that was the starting point for the conversation, which allowed them to have a rather rich discussion. This is a particular technique called conversation mapping, which I don't have time to talk about today. But essentially, it's a way of enabling a diverse group of people to actually have a conversation about the nature of their thinking around drought. And from that, you can pull out, or they pull out, a range of issues that they think are important. And here's just one element of it. And this is the bit I want to focus on briefly, is that themes coming out of that conversation around the nature of um, how do we know we're in drought is centred on issues around forecasting, types of drought, indicators, the impacts, resilience, and then the politics, the governance of drought. So that was in a 15-minute, 20-minute conversation, a very quick conversation. But again, it just revealed how the nature of drought was much greater than just a rainfall event. And then we moved on to something about how should we look at monitoring and early warning systems in the UK in the future. And again, had a conversation around that, which revealed, again, rather, this is just one table's example of their conversation mapping. Um, and again, I don't have time in this short presentation to deal with that. But to show you that essentially these are the kinds of elements that come out of their conversations. So here we have these the themes that I showed you on my side down here, and these are the kind of issues that are pulling out. One or two of them I'm just going to pull out, not random because they were key, that public health is really key element of as an indicator of the impact of drought. So it's not just agricultural elements, there's a whole issue around public health. Um, how do we understand the ownership of monitoring and early warning systems, and who paying for these systems, who should pay for these. Um, there are a whole range of issues around what kinds of drought we're in. Are we in a rainfall drought? Are we in a groundfall, groundwater drought? Are we in a salmon drought? Are we in a whiskey drought, as there was in Scotland? There was not enough water to make whiskey in certain places. Now, that's a completely different type of drought than most people would ever think of, but it has implications, and the impacts on that economy um, uh, are substantial. So, what we talked then was, well, okay, we've talked about the, part of the present, the future, and what kind of actions do we need to take to actually improve our thinking around what drought um, monitoring and early warning systems should be in the future. And here we come up with a series of actions that we might 
need to enact um, to actually improve the way that monitoring and early warning systems are developed such that they represent more of the impacts of drought. Um, I think the one here is about the different layers of vulnerability that people were talking about. And different sectors have experienced drought in different ways, at different geog geographical locations. And so the vulnerability is never to be um, assumed and it varies quite co uh, in complex ways. And that needs to be represented in drought plans. To what extent should, is it already isn't a question. Um, there are a whole series of here that how do we progress from flow measures to measure measures which are actually more meaningful in terms of environment, ecology, and that are linked to drought. Well, that's, that's fairly um, very much on the agenda at the moment. Um, and then there are issues around um, regarding drought and management plans that go beyond the reliance on historical <coughs> data because that's shown to be perhaps not so relevant in the moment. So, again, uh, you know, you, these, these taken out of context of the workshop may not seem as, as significant to you, but for the people, there are about 100 people in this workshop from across the UK. Um, these are really quite significant things that they were thinking about um, that need to be acted. So, what can I pull out in terms of key insights, and I really apologise for the horrendous nature of this slide. Um, <laughs> there's little I could do to actually make it easier at the moment because we're still trying to work through this. But I think what we're trying to show is that there are many, many different types of drought um, existing in different contexts and sectors. They experience drought in totally different ways. So the nature of the indicators and the nature of those impacts have to be kind of uh, connected in quite complicated ways, and that's a quite a challenge for the science community and the research community. Um, in terms of our impacts, we often use them to define drought, but often in hindsight. How do we do that in a kind of future sense? Um, and then we are talking about this bottom one. Where was it? Perhaps this one here. Monitoring and early warning systems do not operate in a vacuum where only the hydroclimatic state is um, important. And that was perhaps the key message underlying the whole of the workshop. It's how do we move beyond that into something where um, it's a more systemic understanding of the nature of drought and indicators and impact. So from a social learning point of view, this is my final slide, I think. Um, from a kind of social science point of view, I would say that this sort of learning approach is actually quite important because the nature of the drought is so complex, the nature of um, what we're trying to do is complex, that we possibly, no one person or institution can possibly handle it or have the answer. So the learning approach seems to be key. Um, we do this social learning allows us to explore framings, epistemologies and the cultures and the different practices of the different stakeholders involved and in so doing can actually contribute to a reframing of drought as more as a social biophysical system rather than just a rainfall event or a particular kind of hydrological indicator and in so doing allows a much better understanding of our impacts and indicators. And if my final slide is this, that our approach here really is to think about reframing of drought, not as this kind of part of a jigsaw um, where humans just fit in. Okay, humans don't fit into jigsaws um, like that. We can't treat the environment as just needing that jigsaw human piece to be put in because the nature of how we see the environment is actually defined by the humans, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you.